Now, BCG's Vice President and the author of Thinking in New Boxes recently was in India to conduct a workshop with the Indian office. I decided to seize the opportunity and caught up with Lukta Prabander on creativity in the new world, what exactly he means when he says, learn to think in new boxes and the changing definition of creativity itself. The conversation was an eye-opener given the examples Luke cited. Listen in. Thank you so much for joining us, Luke. Truly a pleasure uh, to have your company on Brand Equity. My pleasure. Let's start with, you know, uh, with your book, which is really not really thinking out of the box, but thinking in new boxes, voilà. mm -hmm. right? You say think in new boxes before you people say think out of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, what exactly is the box mm -hmm. and what is the route to either get out of the box mm -hmm. or create new boxes? Yeah. But before talking about the root, let's go back really to the basics. What is this box? So the box is, first it's here. It's not over there, it's in the mind. Boxes are in the mind. And there are simplifications, hypotheses, assumptions about what you do. For example, I was in Moscow last year in a coffee shop, drinking a coffee. And suddenly I realized something is strange. Is no prices. Did what say here? Everything was free, but the time. So I said for two hours, I paid two hours. And I could have drunk, I don't know, really? 10, 10 cappuccino, the prep. Everything was free, but the time. Then I asked the manager, I said, what's nice. this here? And say, it's a new concept. It's a new concept. Uh -huh -huh. I realized people, that's what he told me. I realized people coming in my coffee shop, and I was exactly in this, uh, is this pattern. People who are coming to me don't come for coffee. They come for the table, for the Wi-Fi, for maybe... So I say, hey, I'm not in the coffee business. I'm in the office rental space <laughs> business. <laughs> and I decided to completely switch this. Sure. So I don't know what's happening with him, but it's a good example. Sure. Yeah. To coffee was the simplification for the guy. Right. So when you open your coffee shop, so I'm in the coffee business, so you're creative. Cappuccino, latte, super latte. You can do many, many kind of things. But one day, even the super, super latte will not attract another cup. It's a bit more saturated. Then you need something new. And he told me, suddenly I realized, if you have a table with a PC and a coffee, a cup of coffee, if you look at the cup first, you simplify, I'm in the coffee shop business. And of course, he's working on his PC. If you look at the PC first, hey, I'm in the office business, and of course he drinks coffee. In function, what, you could, what do you put first? The cup of coffee of the PC, and it flip-flops in the mind. So he told me, hey, I realized I was in the office business. So I went then to the end of the process. Since I'm in the office, in most office coffee is free, so my coffee is going to be free. But people will pay by, by the hour. Absolutely. And it's a good example because office is not for this coffee shop an ID, a product you can sell. It's a new box. It's a new way to simplify. That's a, that's a really, really uh, awesome example, if I may say so. I mean, it really simplifies what you're talking about. Exactly. You want yeah. another example? Or? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, even more simple. I was in New York six months ago in a coffee shop. Sorry, again, a coffee shop because I spent many, much time there. So, and there was a bar, and on the bar, something like this, for tips, a tip jar, fine. One day I came in, two tip jars. <laughs> okay. okay. What's yeah. this? And then I looked, and between the two, the two balls, there was a little paper with, if you prefer the Beatles, put here. If you prefer the Rolling Stones, put the money here. Then I put to the Beatles, because I'm a fan of the Beatles. Okay. So I said, well, what's this? I called the guy, I said, what's this? And he told me when I introduced this system of two jar, the tipping uh, increased by 20%, 20%. Yeah. And suddenly I realized probably I put more money in the Beatles one. Because you love the Beatles. I love the Beatles. Mm -hmm. So, and just to have the choice, it becomes a bit like a game. And uh, so, and I said, hey, fascinating this. And then I asked the guy, how did you have this idea? Yeah. He told me it was through an analogy because you have two kinds of, of thinking. You have the logical thinking we do all the time, with, uh, but you have all analogical thinking, which brings you an idea like that. And he told me, I was uh, attending like a conference on selling, how to sell. 
And the speaker explained to us, you never have to ask somebody, do you want a shirt? You have to ask, do you want a blue shirt or a red shirt? Okay. So, because in both cases, you don't care. The, the, so, that's how I said, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to put two options, and it worked, 20% increasing. And this, again, what's the problem? The tipping was like a subset of a box called begging. <laughs> to tip, you ask for money. If you keep the same begging box, you can have many ideas. Like I'm going to play guitar. What people do to, to attract money? Absolutely. They say you change the box. No, no. Tipping is not about begging. It's about selling. So he completely changed the way he was looking at tipping. You also interacted with a lot of CEOs, and you've talked about you know how CEOs need to cultivate. Uh, their mental fa uh, faculties and mm -hmm. be more creative, whether it be in business strategy or mm -hmm. just getting fostering a good environment that enables creativity. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you look at CEOs today? I mean, are they so focused with the top line and bottom line? Uh, you know, because of the kind of pressures that mm -hmm. you know it it you know one one has when one is running a company. Mm -hmm. That somewhere mm -hmm. uh, the whole unboxing process, taking time out to look from outside in, mm -hmm. right, um, and get a, an understanding of where the business is and what can be done um, is takes a back seat and hence you don't see as many CEOs uh, really delving very deeply into this whole creative process thinking. This is true, but it's a bit of pity because that's what they should do. Let's have an exercise together. Imagine a perfect company mm. where everybody works perfectly. What would be the role of the CEO? To think beyond. Voila. A strategy in order to bring profit must be frozen. If you change strategy every month, you never have a penny. It's bon. You have to freeze the strategy in order to achieve some growth. Good. But the world is not frozen. Exactly. So you freeze the strategy for good reasons. You freeze the strategy in an unfrozen world. So what happens? There is a gap. The gap between the strategy and the world. And one day the world has changed so much, you need a new strategy. In my words, you need a new box. So the role of the CEO, if he's busy with day-to-day, -day, I don't know, problems, it's because the company is not perfect. Some people are failing. So let's imagine the perfect company and then you understand the real role of the CEO. The CEO should care about the next boxes. What's next? That is his job. He should focus on the new way to look at the business, like the, the coffee shop example. So you can have somebody who brew the coffee, who serve the coffee, who clean the table. So you can delegate everything. But they think, OK, next year, this place will be an office. That's exactly the role of the CEO. Very, very nice talking to you, Luke. My pleasure. Really some super insights on, you know, on creativity, which we have never heard earlier, and how to really you know, think in new boxes. Thanks very much. Thanks for your time. My time.